This is a video presentation on laparoscopic entry. It uh, demonstrates closed and open entry techniques. The first is a closed entry technique. This is a patient who has a high BMI. So the initial incision is made um, just in a strip below the umbilicus. Forceps is used to spread out the umbilicus. Veris needle is placed through it and then by gentle lifting the abdomen, the entire needle is passed through it. Two clicks are heard. The first click is when it passes through the rectus sheath and the second click is when it passes through the peritoneum. This is a saline test to, to ensure that the various needle is in the right place. After this is uh, done, we attach the gas tubing to inflate the abdomen with carbon dioxide gas. The initial pressure should be around 8 millimeters or less than that. The first step after various needle insertion would be a primary port insertion. The intra-abdominal pressure here is around 20 millimeters of mercury. By placing the hand proximal to the uh, umbilical incision, the primary port is inserted through it and the gas tubing is attached. The camera is inserted to make sure it is in the abdominal cavity. The next is a direct trocar entry. That's the anterior superior ilex spine on either side, and that's the lower coastal margin on either side. This is a normal, this is a patient who has a normal BMI. That's the marking where the inferior epigastric vessels would be. Umbilicus is separated with the forcep. The initial step is to give an incision in the umbilicus or in a strip just below the umbilicus. The forceps is kept as it is. Primary trocar is used. I'm using a blunt trocar which is also an optical trocar and a balloon port. The port is placed in that incision and both the surgeon and the assistant then lift the abdomen to pass the port through it. This is a supraumbilical entry, which is also a closed entry technique. This was um, done for a patient who had multiple fibroid uterus undergoing laparoscopic myomectomy. So just below the umbilicus, a vertical incision is made good enough so that the 10 millimeter port can be inserted through it. This is the uh, picture of the abdomen just above the umbilicus. So it consists of anterior and posterior rectus sheath and the peritoneum. And that's why we uh, three audible clicks when we're passing the various needle through it. So gently lifting the abdomen, that's the first click. That's the second click and third click. So we are in the abdominal cavity. After insufflating the abdomen with carbon dioxide gas, I'm using a 10 millimeter port and we are inside the abdomen. Next is the Palmer's point entry, which is also a close entry and a technique. This is the abdomen, which is divided into nine quadrants. So we use the mid clavicular line, just three centimeters below the inferior coastal margin. An incision is given first. And after that, the Betty's needle is passed through it, gently lifting the abdomen. That's the first click, second click, and third click. We are in the abdominal cavity. We do the test to ensure that the Betty is in the right place. And the gas tubing is attached after that. The initial pressures, we would expect it to be around 8 millimeters of mercury. After carbon dioxide insufflation, the next step is to insert the primary port through the palmus point. We place the hand proximal to the port insertion to create a gas bubble and have a splinting effect. And we ensure that we are in the now we move on to uh, the palmus point entry in an obese patient. In obese patient, because of the excessive fat, the umbilicus gets displaced and it's falsely uh, placed. Normally, the umbilicus would be expected to be just below the bifurcation of the aorta, but in this case, we would find more closer to the anterior superior ilex spine. So after initial, inc initial incision um, that was given in just three centimeters below the inferior coastal margin and the various needle was inserted with three clicks felt and heard. Uh, the saline test is done to ensure that the various needle is in the right place. 
the gas tubing is attached to it to insufflate abdomen with carbon dioxide. Now we move on to Hassan's technique, which is more so done by surgeons and less often by a gynecologist. This is the patient who is having a laparoscopic myomectomy for two large fibroids. She also had an open myomectomy in the past. So the initial incision is given just above the umbilicus. Then two Langenbach retractors are used to separate and expose the rectus sheet. We are separating the fat layer. This is the rectus sheet which is held between uh, two spencers and we are lifting it up either a Macintosh and a scissors can be uh, used or a knife can be used to open the rectus sheet the layer that follows immediately after this is the rectus muscle Langenbach can be advanced and the rectus muscles are separated using midline as the point without any tearing or cutting of rectus muscles Spencers can also be used to widen up the incision. After separating the rectus muscles, this is the peritoneum that is exposed, which is opened with McIntosh scissors. Langenbach can be used to kind of separate the peritoneum. Or Spencers can be used, which is a blunt tip instrument, so as not to damage any omentum or bowel underneath. Before placing the trocar, it is essential to look that the bowel or the fat is seen and then we place the blunt trocar through it and connect the gas tubing to it. We look through the scope to ensure that we are in the right place. Thank you for watching.